Good morning and welcome, welcome, welcome to yet another video. I hate the fact that I say yet another every single time that I start one of these, but I don't know if there's gonna be a vlog tomorrow, okay? Uh, I'm gonna try to because I'm obviously trying to be the best me that I can be when I'm uploading these things, but um, today is a different kind of day. Today is a day full of questions and answers. And today the first question comes from a dude by the name of Brian Alanis. You claim to be a hip hop connoisseur, so what is your opinion of, of MF Doom? What's MF stand for? Uh, is my answer to you. If you don't know him, check him out. He has Aesop Rock level rhyming. Okay, first of all, let's be let's be honest. Okay, nobody has Aesop Rock level. Hold on. Look, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna be honest with you. Okay, I can sit here and read everything that Aesop Rock has ever written. Nobody nobody writes like Aesop Rock. Okay, so you want to see my Aesop Rock chart? You know what? This is okay. Music for earthworms, check. The original, check. And apple seed, check. So, look, I'm just a, I'm, what do I wanna say? So yes, I've heard of MF Doom, obviously. Uh, Mad Villain, Mad Villainy, I think is what it's called. Um, was probably my favorite album of his, uh, simply because it had it's villains and villainy in the, in the name and I have villains and villains in my name. Anyway, it doesn't matter. Uh, thank you for asking the question. Let's move on to the next one. Question number two comes from my cousin Aaron. Cousin Aaron asks, if you could change one thing about you, what would it be? Love, Cousin Aaron. I've always been very, very good at being, at being passionate about things that interest me. Um, I, I, I was born with some sort of imagination and I had an, a, I had an affinity for drawing, but I was never good at drawing. Um, I fell in love with graffiti and I spent every single waking moment since that one time that I was 13 years old and I drew my name for the first time, every single waking moment trying to be better at drawing and being better at being an artist. So um, it's been that way throughout my entire life with everything that I've done. I either like something and I go all in or just never that. So the one thing that I would change about me is uh, my inability to be disciplined when it comes to fitness. Um, I would I would try to be more, especially because I'm, I'm I consider myself a good athlete. There isn't a single sport that I'm not good at. Um, and I'm not gonna bring up golf because, you know, uh, but basketball, football, baseball, uh, football, soccer, uh, you name it, volleyball, you name it, I'm, I'm good. I'm coordinated, I'm, I'm that. So if I was able to bring my fitness up and I didn't have this, this little gut down here, um, I don't know, that's the one thing that I would change about me, my discipline when it comes to fitness. Thank you for asking, Cousin Aaron. Hope to see you soon, buddy. Question number three from my brother, Skylar Johnson, also known as Foreplay. Um, biggest personal achievement so far, from creating a dynasty all the way down to the little ones that most people wouldn't care about, but you hold close. Okay, so my personal, my best personal achievement, obviously, is, is, uh, is the OG, right? Like, that's, that'll always be my favorite thing. Uh, uh, as, as far as achievements go. Um, as far as like every other stuff that, that falls in between, I think that the, I think that the, the other thing would be this. Fo follow me. Guggen Bates and Guggen Squad. I was able to give advice to a couple of friends, showed them uh, some ways of doing a certain thing. They took it and ran it, and it goes back to every single thing that I've always said throughout my entire career. I can help open doors. I can help show people how to do things, but it's ultimately always going to be up to the individual that walked through those doors to own the entire room. And my buds, my friends, my pals, and they did just that. They walked in to the room, so what's happening in fishing and said, let's put a little salt and pepper on this thing and show everybody how it's done. So, thanks for the question. That's a good one. I certainly appreciate you even stopping by and asking the questions, brother. Thank you so much. Hope you're well. Uh, congrats on everything you're doing. CTRL, uh, all the other secret ships that you're doing. I see you, brother. Keep grinding. Rain Edits asks, what has been the most important thing for your mental health recently? I'm genuinely curious. 
You know what's crazy is that a couple of days ago I talked, I think it was on a podcast, I don't know which podcast it was, but I come from a very antiquated culture that is the Mexican culture where men aren't allowed to be soft. Uh, we aren't allowed to have feelings. We aren't allowed to do a whole bunch of things. And for the most part, like it's helped me a lot. I'm not gonna say that that's the, it, 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 I wouldn't raise my son that way. You know, I would, I would try to make sure that he is open about his feelings and he doesn't bottle shit in the way that I do sometimes. Um, but at the same time, like it's helped me a lot. I'm not gonna lie. It's, it's helped me brush off a lot of the, a lot of the shit talk very early on from different people. Uh, it, now it just, it's like I'm, I'm almost immune to the shit talk. I mean, bar a couple of things that do bother me, but to have an outburst and to not do that, I don't know. So as, as far as that, um, realizing that what I'm sometimes stressed about is a true, true feeling that I should focus on and try to solve, right? Like, because usually when I'm stressed out about something, I literally don't do anything about it. It's just a feeling that I have, right? Like that, that choking in your chest, the worry. I just literally live with it without, I don't even know how to explain it. Like I just am, right? Like I'm, I'm stressed today or this shit's going on over here. So that like, it's helped me a lot because I'm a functioning person. Like I don't let that, that one, you know, anxiety or that one stress or whatever form of, of feelings I have, like in the way of, of doing the job, um, you know, sadness is also like a, like a big one. Like I, I, I can't tell you guys how sad I was when Nade, you know, left Optic and went to go start his own thing and we had our little fallout. Like that hurt me a lot, like internally, but because I am who I am, I just let it, I just said, all right, it's part of life, put it in the back and I put that sadness aside and I never, I didn't reach out to him for a very long time, right? I, think, I don't think we talked for, for like a year and I regret that, right? Like I think that it would have been so much better to sit down and have an actual conversation, but I don't think neither he or I were in a position to have that sort of tough conversation. Um, but everything worked out for the best. He and I are still the bestest of friends. Um, it, when, when we started talking again, it was like nothing ever happened. And we talked a little bit about the situation and that was that, like he, he understood now. Obviously when he's in a position that he's in now, it's easier to understand the position that I was in when I was in, it doesn't matter. But the fact is, uh, what, I've, what I've been doing truly for, for my own personal mental health is, is allowing myself to feel and allowing myself to identify those factors as emotional human reaction to something and not be a gosh darn robot as I've been for the majority of my life because we are supposed to be machos. That's good. I am the menace, big dog asks me, what was the hardest part about selling your ownership in Optic and moving to energy and also bringing along Matt and Seth? That's a tough question to answer because, uh, you know, well, actually it's, it's gonna be easy, right? And because of feelings, right? The things that I just talked about. For the longest time, for the past three years, <clears throat> I told myself, what good is regret? Like, what, what good is it for you? What does it do? Is it gonna make things better? Is it gonna get that back? No, the hardest thing is the fact that I'm always gonna live with regret for the rest of my life, right? That's gonna be period, end of story. Am I gonna let it like impede the things that I do on a daily basis? No, obviously for the last two years, I've been continuing to be me. I've been continuing to create content. I've, I've, I've started to build you know, the Huntsman alongside energy. And, it, you know, we've done a very, very good job at that. What that has shown me is that one, I'm not a one hit wonder, right? Two, the model that we started at 6050 has translated into so many other uh, opportunities. Guggen Squad, uh, 100 Thieves for Nate Shot, uh, Huntsman for me now, and other stuff that we can't talk about yet. But it, it, for, for me, that's the hardest part. The hardest part is, is having to live with a little bit of regret that that's always gonna be in the back of my head. Every single time I look at it, every single time I'm in the mirror, every single time that I'm doing something, I'm, it's, it's always gonna be a, a, a faint reminder of, of, of that one particular case that happened in my house, in, in, in my life. But, you know, I've had a bunch of other things that, that, that I regret, right? Like I regret uh, not uploading videos for those two whole years at the beginning of, of, uh, of, of, of Optic, right? Like I, I said, all right, well, I, I did the mistake that a lot of CEOs and a lot of corporate people in this industry do. They say, well, I'm, I'm gonna focus on the spreadsheets and this and the other, so I'm gonna put all the content stuff aside. And as a content creator, as the content creator, hopefully with your vote, I'll be able to get content creator of the year. As a content creator, you, you sort of can't get away from that. 
right? The same way that I'm an artist and I can't get away from graffiti, the same way that I'm a fisherman, I'll never be able to get away from that. I, I, I did myself a disservice in stopping from uploading every single day or uploading videos on a weekly basis. I gave myself the excuse, which is unacceptable by the way, I gave myself the excuse to be okay with not uploading because you're doing a corporate job or you're focusing on the sponsorship. You're focusing on this. I hate the fact that I did that. I hate the fact that I was okay with making those excuses. Um, and and that, yeah. So the hardest thing was, was that. Having my friends with me is the most important part of, uh, of, of everything else. Had I lost my friends alongside with, with, with the other stuff, Oh, it would have been it would have been devastating to me. It would have been something that crippled me for sure. Now I have a friend. I have a, a tons of friends. Right. I've I've, uh, I've been very very blessed and lucky. And I don't know why people deal with me the way that they do. But my friends from high school that I've known for 25 plus years are still my friends to this day. Right. Um, my graffiti friends who I've been friends with for 20 years. They're still my friends today. All of the people that I built this with, they're still my friends today. Uh, my fishing buddies, like every, I have, I have, you know, I would have lost something very important to me, a very big part of my life, if that wouldn't, have, that my friends wouldn't have came with on, on the next adventure. And I don't think that that would have ever been an option. Um, obviously, my friends are my friends forever. Like Nate and I aren't on the same team today, and we're still best of friends. So I don't know, but uh, I don't know. I, I don't think there was anything really hard. Um, because as long as you are with your friends, it doesn't matter. I mean, it put, put, put you into a, into a scenario. Think of two great friends of yours, right, that you hang out with, that you laughed with, and that. And then I'm going to put you guys in jail for a month. Do you think you guys are going to be bored? Absolutely not. Is it going to suck? Sure. But as long as you're with your friends, like, nothing else in the, in, in the world matters. As long as with your family, nothing else in the world matters. Um, it is the people around you that will always make you you and it's the people around you that will always get you through the shit that you need to get through um, and help you if you need to or if you're mad enough to ask for help. Hope that answers your question. Next. Felipe Savage asks, uh, what were some of the other names in mind for the Chicago Call of Duty team besides the amazing name Huntsman? The thing about that is that there was never any other name that I would have picked or that came through my head or anything. The second, like my, my brain was like a Rolodex or one of those slot machines that are just like ding, 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 just about, and then all of a sudden Huntsman came across my, my head or my imagination, immediately I picked it. What has happened though is that there has been different iterations of what the Huntsman logo could have been and we're gonna go see, through them right now as we go through this process. If I can zoom in. Um, but this was the original one. Now, when I told them what I wanted to do, when I gave them the name Huntsman, I wanted to be super secretive about the things that, I just said, hey, I'm starting this new uh, outdoor line called Huntsman. Uh, and in saying that, he went and sort of did the research on, you know, on Huntsman. The first thing that comes up is obviously the Huntsman spider from, from Australia, and this was the first iteration of it. Uh, I said, I don't like the anchor at the bottom. I love the letters. I like the way the N uh, sort of curves down underneath it. Uh, so at first I thought, I'm like, that's, that's a really, really good one. Uh, but I told him, we're not there yet, so give me another example. He then comes back with uh, three different iterations of the same one, and part of the low quality on this, by the, by the way, but uh, he comes with three different iterations of the Huntsman, uh, and they have a hook at the bottom because fishing, outdoor, that's what he thought about. But it also, immediately as I look at this, I'm like, you know what, I could have the Huntsman Spider be the logo, and what, instead of, instead of looking at this through the lens of outdoors and seeing a hook there, what if we make that a glare of the scope, of the sniper scope, and in the announcement we have this this spider, this huntsman spider going across like the sniper rifle and then it engulfs the 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 scope and that's what it is. And I'm like, man, the huntsman spider is native to Australia. Uh, so the league then lends us their graphics people and they said, all right, here's some inspiration because we it's a collaborative effort. Obviously the league and us, we work together. So the league gave us uh, a little bit of leeway. So the inspiration for this, the Chicago flag and the Huntsman spider. Again, this is when we were going down the Huntsman and then thinking about the spider. And you know, I've always been afraid of spiders, but I also like spiders, Spider-Man and all that stuff. So as you see here, these are some of the Spider-Man logos, I think, that, that have been released. So here's the inspiration that this uh, incredible artist went through. And then he's like, all right, what represents Chicago, right? The Y in Chicago represents the Chicago River, right? Or, or the, um, 
what is it called, the municipal works or something with the, with the Chicago Y. You see it here in, in, in the city of Chicago, traffic control, and it's the Y. It's, it's pretty much it represents the Chicago River, okay? Um, so it took that, and then they say the work in progress independent in, or identity development. So he's like spotter marks with the H uh, with the Chicago stars from the Chicago flag. And here's the first one, here's the second one, here's the third one, here's the fourth one. Buddy of shape and the leg details, like, I, I, I get it. I, again, this is like... Uh, them going through my like they did exactly what somebody describing what they wanted to be did so I'm like man this is this is like crazy I don't know I don't know that I, I can't I don't feel any of these I can't like them the Y web the you know it, it was very it was very direct and there was really no no way of them knowing exactly what I wanted because they can't read my mind as much as I would have loved them to so then I hit up my boy Sueda Sueda obviously is one of the most talented uh, dudes that I've ever met uh, in, in design work. So he went through a bunch of them. Still keeping the same uh, Huntsman detail oriented with the Huntsman spider with the H in the middle. I'm like, my name starts with H. I don't want people to say this is that, you know, I, I, I was that vain, which in times I am, that I would want my whole team to be named after my H or the H they borrowed from the, the word hex. So here are some of the, some of the inspiration that, that he gave us. Now, all of these are amazing spiders. They, they look great on any other uh, f artwork or, or apparel or whatever. These will be perfect. There's nothing wrong with these spiders. But at this point, I realized th this is not what I want. So then I said, uh, or who was it? I don't know if it was Hitch or someone. I don't know. We were having a discussion. I'm like, yo, what about like a battle axe? Oh, omens. Omen said, yo, what about a battle axe for the things? Because I don't have any of, of the work that he did for me, but... Um, we, we went down them, right? We were like, all right, we're done with the spider stuff. Uh, let's just move on to, to the next iteration of what this is. Then I hit up Sueda and I told him about the battle axes, right? He gave me this one. I love the battle axes. I like the, I like the feel of it. It, it. it reminded me of the maple leaf. Uh, I don't know if it's because it's red or because it's got those little uh, points at the end, but it reminded me of a, label, a maple leaf. So immediately I said, I'm like, I love this, but we're on the right, right track. Keep going. Give me other, other samples. Then... He went with this one and I was like, oh my God, now we're getting closer. I love the text on this. It looks great. I love the battle axes. They, they remind me of like true Viking battle axes. And I'm like, we're almost there. Keep, g give me another example. And this is where we fell in love with the logo that you see today. I immediately, uh, I saw it and I saw what my, what, what my branding was going to be. I saw it and I'm like, I can get behind this. And if people can get behind a two letter word logo they can definitely get behind something like graphically and aesthetically pleasing as this beauty is um, so here are the battle axes in the middle as, as you see here it reminds me of something that's that's emblematic right something that i wanted to be i wanted to match the 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 sort of feel of a of a sports club that people would would love and, and these battle axes to me seem like a little bit of both uh, just regular lumberjack axes and battle axes, something that can be thrown. This is what I fell in love with. Immediately, I'm like, okay, you need to remove the H from there and uh, and put the Chicago Stars and the logo that you have in your hands, in your shirts, in your sweaters that you see today was born. So thank you for the question. I've, I've actually wanted to make a video like this about this uh, before, but here you have it. I hope that you like it and uh, let's get on to the last and final question comes from Stephen Gilhouse. Are you ever going to get the Guggen Squad on the Eavesdrop podcast? I know it's COD-based, but it would be great hearing fishing stories between you and the guys. You know what, Stephen? I'm not even mad at you, okay? I'm just going to pretend like you had a lapse in judgment or you forgot about something. But what kind of, what kind of, you, you obviously don't watch the, uh, the podcast. I've had both Rob and John B. and Flair on the podcast uh, as recent as last month. It's okay, I'm not mad at you. Anyway, I'm on the vlog right here, everybody. Thank you so much for tuning in. If you guys enjoyed the video, please do not leave without leaving a like. Having said that, and with that said, I'm going to see you guys more hopefully as usual. And as per usual, at the same. No, not, not hopefully, definitely. As usual, and as per usual, at the same damn time. Oh, wow, I'm handsome. Have you voted for that guy yet? You can, right now. First line in the description.